Um, so somebody once said, nothing amuses more harmlessly than computation. I don't know who this person is, but I'm here to prove him wrong. As a physicist, I think about computation. And the simple idea I want to give out today, how do you actually build computation out of everyday things? As an example, I'm going to use water. For me, computation runs deeper than that. Computation is actually a theory of life and nature. If you look at beautiful organisms out there, it's bizarre that we actually don't understand really clearly what controls the shape, size, and form of these and the morphologies of things out there. And I believe there is a secret lying behind that, and I think a theory of computation might be able to understand and unlock these secrets. The motivation that I start with is a tragedy. It's a tragedy of computer science. You might be surprised, but it's a tragedy of success. I'm not going to tell you anything about the success we've had. We wouldn't be here today without the success of computer science. But I want to tell you about what we lost along the way when we were going on that route. This person is the father of computation, John von Neumann. On his deathbed, he was not actually thinking about the way we usually think of computation. He was cooking up a theory of how computation connects with self-replicating systems and how a fundamental property of biology actually arises from computation. He died. That's Rolf Lauder, who told us information is physical, that there is no notion of virtual information, that every single object around you is actually encoding information. The famous physicist John Wheeler actually told us we could understand nature if we actually understand it in a form of a computation. In 1981, a very famous meeting happened. This was the year I was born. All these physicists got together and said, hey, let's try to figure out what computation is all about. This meeting was held at MIT, but some very famous people showed up. The people circled in there is Feynman, uh, George Dyson, and uh, Rolf Lauder. And they actually literally thought about opening up the mind to think about how can physics connect with computation. The way we think about computer science is a science of information processing. I have a problem with that. The paradigm I like to think about is actually computation is a means to not just control information, but materials. And believe me, biology does this every single day. I'm an experimentalist, so I think about building stuff and to be able to show my ideas out. And the example I'm going to use today are fluids. Fluids are remarkable. This is a very simple idea of simple fluids. These are true droplets bouncing on a fluid bath. But they're showing something really incredible. They're showing the particle wave duality of physics that if a particle doesn't bound on the stream, there are no waves. And if there are no waves, there are no particles, because the waves actually stabilize these particles. So fluids have this amazing property of actually embedding uh, physical systems and in a way of mapping them. What I invented for my work is called bubble logic. It's the first all-fluidic computation family that actually exhibits nonlinearity, feedback, bistability, cascadability, everything we love about electronics, but purely out of water. Rather than telling you the graphs and giving you the data sheets out there, uh, by the way, I can hand out the data sheets if people want to play them in their kitchens. Uh, I'll show you some videos. Here is an example of a one-bit flip-flop. Uh, these things operate at really high speeds. Uh, we have to slow them down. So these are videos of microscopic, very, very tiny little droplets actually moving around at extremely high speeds. Uh, so this is a flip-flop circuit for all the people in the electronics industry. Here's an example of a synchronizer. When we have bits flowing around, you need to synchronize them. So this is a completely fluidic way of synchronizing these tiny little bits. And if you watch it carefully, you'll figure out how it works. When you come up with a new logic family, you have to build ring oscillators. Uh, it turns out I built a ring oscillator that it just looks like a ring. There are three NAND gates and a delay line, and they flip-flop to actually give you a stable oscillator. So I want to get back to the notion of how physics and computation would be able to help us solve the biggest puzzle that's open in biology, which is the fact that since biology builds things out of computation, we actually don't have the means before this work came out to be able to do the same in completely in vitro systems. As an academic, I like to issue report cards, so I'm going to give a report card for physics of computation. We've understood very well what limits of computation are from this field, so it gets an A. Actually generated fairly good platforms for computation, but the new platforms are slow to come out, so it gets a C. We are doing some amazing amount of work on algorithmic self-assembly, so it gets a B there. 
Uh, we can understand deeper secrets of nature of how thermodynamics connects with computation, so it gets a B there. But actually understanding the secrets of life, I would give it an F. You guys can decide on your own whether the student should pass, but the only thing I want to remind you, this is the only student in my class. Thank you. <laughs>